Hi, this is Sala Sames with another video for you. And I was going to do something on a coherent theme this week, but I was sidetracked by the terrible news about the Zimmerman verdict. And all I want to say about that is that it was a uh, incredibly depressing travesty. What happened that night was a racist, black targeting extrajudicial execution. And I really hope that his family will find at least some measure of justice in civil uh, suit or in a civil rights trial. And uh, so that kind of threw me off the loop for what I was gonna do in terms of talking about race and sexuality and body and controversial topics and so on. So what I'm gonna do today is just focus on something more uh, entertainment oriented, more positive, which is the movie Pacific Rim. And I've seen that two times so far. I really want to see it a third time. I love it. It's amazing. I suggest everybody go see it. Uh, don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews. And it was sort of a, a natural draw to me because I was raised on monster movies. Uh, think Gojira and Gamera and, you know, the Tokyo being destroyed. And it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a pipeline to my id in a way. I, I think these monster movies are good for dealing with terrible political catastrophes, but in a way that makes people feel better about themselves, you know, because we're not, we're not fighting each other. We're fighting the alien and the alien who does not stand in for any human beings. You know, there's, they're, they're just, they're completely alien and inimical and is something that we have to come together. We have to fight it. And I just, I, I love that trope. Although I will have to sort of back up there a little bit and say that a lot of these monster movies go even deeper than that because, you know, who are these things? The, did we create them? Did we unleash them accidentally by what we've done to the earth? So there's also kind of an environmentalist aspect to it as well. And I, I think it's very relevant. It's, it's like new mythology for the world. But uh, I won't go off on an abstract vein. I want to bring it back to the movie and how much I love the movie, how much I love the main character, Mako Mori. And I'm going to show you the poster I got. The, uh... Okay. So it shows you how excited I am about it. And what I really liked about her is that she had the strongest character arc of the movie. We start off with your kind of generic burly blonde white guy hero, but his pain, his loss is really there to kickstart her character arc. And we see her, how she is one of the only survivors of Tokyo that was destroyed by one of the kaiju. She's running from them. She's played brilliantly by a young actress as a young girl, and then uh, is rescued by Stacker Pentecost, Idris Elba's character. Idris Elba's character, who then uh, adopts her and raises her, and uh, she has this amazingly complicated relationship with him. And the um, generic white guy dude, uh, uh, Raleigh, is just is kind of there as a witness to that in a way. Um, I, I don't want to badmouth him too much, but he just wasn't terribly compelling to me. He he, Mako Mori, and I think he needed to be there, but. She was really the center of the movie, and he was there to sort of shine a spotlight on her. And I, I loved her character. I loved, especially there was one line she said when Raleigh Beckett, you know, the, um, uh, uh, says to her, you know, you don't have to obey him. You don't have to obey your adoptive father in everything. He's being overly protective, and you kind of obey him too much. And she says, it's not obedience, it's respect. And that to me was a beautiful moment in the movie and it really, it, it took her outside of this normal dynamic in which Asian women are usually portrayed as. We are either doormats or we are rebelling against traditional Asian things and we're becoming like Western individuals and, and either one of those are uh, restrictive and really do not paint a full picture of us. And I liked how she had this, she had this hybrid identity. She was, um, you know, she never forgot her birth family, her home culture, but she was also uh, very tied to her uh, adoptive father and this sort of a Jaeger culture that developed around the giant fighting robots. 
And um, so I'm, I'm going to wrap this up now, but I, I'm just going to say that I, I love her character. I think everyone should see the movie. Um, I like how the physicality of her character, and I think the actress uh, Rinko Kikuchi probably gained some weight for the role, which is great. She, uh, I mean, she's not like, you know, soup, like like uh, you know my body type, but she is, um, you know, compact in a strong way. She's not very very wa waifish as we see in a lot of women in action movies. And uh, I, I really like that. I, I, I love the movie. I am looking forward to seeing it the third time. And I strongly suggest everybody else go out and see it. It's fantastic. Um, and I guess I'll see you next week. Bye.